Hi and welcome to the first ever video from the Cult of Crafting. My name is Michael and in this video I'll be showing you how I made this fantasy winter diorama. I used a lot of different techniques and materials and I'll do my best to cover as much as possible. If you got any questions just leave them in the comments and I'll answer them if I can. Okay, let's get into it. The minis I'll be using in this diorama are the Snuggling Blood Bowl team. Snotlings are the smaller cousins of orcs and goblins in the Warhammer universe. The box comes with two sets of 10 minis, but I'll only be using half of them, so I'll avoid duplicates. I wanted to have some minis doing snow day activities, so I did some minor conversions. This guy was designed to be on stilts, but I shortened the stilts to make ski poles. For the skis I broke off two pieces of coffee stirrer stick in a fitting length. I kept the brakes because I wanted them to look like the snotling had just stuck two broken planks of wood to his feet. Here I'm using the edge of a screwdriver to make some grooves that look like wood grain. The skis were a bit too wide to fit his feet so I trimmed off a bit from the sides. and then I simply stuck them to his feet using super glue. I wanted a couple of minis throwing snowballs. This guy is already throwing a small squig, so here I'm trimming it down so it looks more like a snowball. The same goes for this guy holding a rock. I had this orc thrower left over from another blood ball team, who's perfect for a snowball fight. I cut off the football he's holding. I'll be sculpting a snowball so it doesn't matter if the cuts are rough, as long as I take care not to cut off any fingers, both mine and the orcs. For the snowballs I'm using Milliput Standard, which is a two-part epoxy putty. You mix the two parts together and then it hardens after a couple of hours. Milliput is a lot like clay, so it's really easy to work with, and it's great for applications like this. After I've mixed the midi pot for a minute or two, I stick it on the mini and go on to refine the shape, just focusing on rounding it off, uh, adjusting the size and making sure I don't accidentally cover up the fingers. Finally, I use a brush and some water to smooth out the surface. Eventually, I cover them in snowflock, which I forgot to record, but basically I just painted on some glue on the snowball and dipped the model in the snowflock and then just shook off the excess. And I repeated the same process for the two other minis. I then proceeded to pin the minis by drilling a 1mm hole in their feet, adding some super glue and sticking a paper clip in the hole. I did this so I had something to hold on to while I was painting the minis, because they're really tiny. And eventually used the pin to stick them to the diorama. I used the same paint scheme for all the miniatures. I wanted a simple and easy paint scheme in a Christmassy style, so I painted them in the style of Santa Claus's outfit. Red and white for the clothes, black for straps, belts and boots. I painted the skin with two coats of Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint, for the red parts I used Evil Sun Scarlet with a wash of Ragland Flesh Shade, Contrast Black Templar for the black parts, and for the metal parts, which later had a coat of Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal. All the white parts were painted in Wraithbone and given a wash of Agrax Earth Shade, and then cleaned up with more Wraithbone. The wood was painted using Contrast Wildwood. That's it for the minis, let's get started on the diorama. I got this new electric foam cutting tool and I wanted to try it out for this build. The foam cutting tool cuts the foam by melting it so I'll be wearing an appropriate mask to protect me from the fumes. Also I'm sitting next to an open window. Even so this thing produces a lot of smoke. So much that I ended up airing out the entire floor for half an hour after using it. So yeah, this uh, should be done outside. I could have used a knife instead, but I wanted to try out my new toy. Anyways, the foam I'm using is EPS, for no other reason that it's a lot cheaper than XPS in my corner of the world, and it's a lot easier to come by. I stacked two 5cm blocks that'll form the base of the hill. 
I didn't have a clear plan other than I wanted a cave entrance and a ski slope for the snodlings. So I'm just kind of figuring out the shape as I'm going along. Here I am cutting out the space for the cave entrance. I wanted to stick an electric tea light in there so it looked like the cave was lit by a firelight. So I had to cut a hole so I'd be able to get the light in once the diorama was done. After I'm done cutting, I glued the two pieces together with PVA glue and fix them using toothpicks. The shape looks a little rough right now, but I'll be covering it up with a modeling compound so that will even it out. Eventually I'll mount the diorama on this picture frame that I'll spray paint black. For the ground level I'm using another piece of EPS foam. This one is one centimeter thick. I made some rock formations from plaster using a couple of rubber molds from Woodland Scenics. So I'm mixing up some plaster. This ended up being a little thicker than I usually like it, but it's not a problem. Plaster is pretty easy to work with. I'm just making a bunch of rocks here. I tend to make a batch of them and then save the ones I have left over. I think I actually ended up using some that I previously made, but I thought I'd show you the process anyway. You can make your own rock molds by lightly crunching up some tin foil and then unwrapping it, and make a tray that you can pour the plaster into. It gives some pretty good results. After the rocks have dried, which takes a few hours, I stuck them to the hills with hot glue. I found a handful of small rocks that fit around the cave entrance. They're easy to break and cut with a fine tooth saw, so that's another option. There were some gaps between them, but I filled those with the modeling compound later, so that's not an issue. Here I'm mixing and applying the modeling compound. It's a paper fiber mixed with plaster and water, of course. It adds some realism to the ground shape by making it uneven and bumpy, so it doesn't just look like carved foam. It also hardens the piece without the plaster being too brittle. I got the paper fibers from a paper mache mix, but you can buy modeling compound ready-made from Geek Gaming Scenics or the Sculptor Mold brand. You could probably use paper mache or wall filler or something like that instead, uh, since the snow flock will cover most of it anyway. After it's dried, I glue on some rocks. I could have just stuck them into the modeling compound, but I didn't think of that at the time. At this point, the ground seemed a bit too uneven, so I thought I could even it out by spreading a layer of plaster over the landscape and then spray it with water. Afterwards, I realized that I could have used the plaster to fix the branches instead of gluing them in place. For painting the plaster rocks, I'm using Vallejo Yellow Ochre, Blue Grey Pale, Burnt Umber, Grey Z, and a black paint. I thin them with water to a very thin consistency, maybe around 1 to 10. You don't need these specific colors, you just need something to give some color variation. Then I painted the rocks with spots of the four colors, making sure to leave some blank space. I'll let it dry for a moment before destroying it with a black wash. The branches are painted dark brown with contrast wildwood. So this black wash was way too dark for my liking and covered up most of the color I just added. I should have tested it on a spare piece of plaster before adding it uh, to my terrain. I gave it a dry brush of blue-gray pale to try and lighten up the rocks. In the end it doesn't matter much because the snow will cover up the mistakes. Then I added a bunch of winter tufts from Army Painter, mostly around the rocks and bits of wood making sure not to space them evenly, because spacing them evenly can make it look off. Here I'm cutting a hole in the base of the diorama using the tea light as a guide, so it'll fit snugly into the foam. And there it is, a perfect fit. Now I just have to turn it on, simply flip the switch, 
Simply pull it out of the base and use both hands to turn it on. Isn't that lovely? I wanted to have smooth black edges on the diorama, so I covered them in wall filler or spackle. I've never done this before, so I wasn't sure if it was the best solution. Alternatively, I was thinking of covering them in cardboard, which might have been better. After the wall filler had dried, I took it outside and sanded it. And then I painted the edges black. Now it's time for the snow flock. I took the diorama outside. It was a windy day, so I cut open a box to act as a screen from the wind. I'm using a cheap matte varnish instead of a glue here. It's quite tacky before it dries. The flock I'm using is Knock Powdery Snow, which is a very nice product. It's a fine glittery powder and it's quite realistic. I could have used baking powder instead, but it will turn yellow in time, I'm told. I'm straining it through a sieve to get an even coverage and avoid clumps. Unfortunately, my brilliant box invention is failing and the flock is going pretty much anywhere else than on the diorama. I ended up doing the spraying outside and the flocking inside my house. And I repeated the process three times before I was satisfied with the amount of snow. Right, we need a Christmas tree. I had one of these weedy wire trees that I wanted to bulk up, so I dipped it in a mix of PVA glue and water at a ratio at around 1 to 4, I think. I also added a few drops of washing up liquid to reduce the surface tension. I let the glue run off the tree for a few minutes and then I sprinkled it with foam flock from Woodland Scenics and let it dry. Here it is next to an untreated tree. I think it looks much nicer now. To decorate the tree, I first wound this chain around it, which was easier than I anticipated. Then I added some beads of super glue here and there to secure it to the branches. I figured the greenskins would use skulls for Christmas bulbs. These are resin ones from Green Stuff World. To attach them, I just added a drop of super glue to the back of the skulls and stuck them where I wanted them to be. The tree was pretty dense with the added flock, so the glue really gripped them nicely. In fact, this was uh, surprisingly painless. I didn't have any trouble at all. Just a drop of glue, stick it in place, works every time. I painted the skulls with wraith bone and gave them a wash of Agrax Earthshade. They were mostly going to be covered by snow anyway, so there wasn't any repaint too many details on them. Of course I needed an ornament for the top of the tree. I thought a nice moon icon would fit these cave dwelling greenskins. So I made one out of green stuff, which is another epoxy putty, but different than the millipod I used earlier. Millipod is good for filling gaps or building on top of something solid because it sets solid when once it's dry. Green stuff is, uh, on the other hand, flexible. It's kind of like rubber. And it's uh, good if you want things that might break if they were solid. Things like banners and capes. If you made them from Millipod, they'd easily snap, but since green stuff is flexible, it's really good for stuff like that. The moon was quite easy to make. I just bent it into a moon shape and spent some time refining the shape into something I liked. Then I used a silicon tool to make some small indentations here and there to add some detail. I primed the icon white because I wanted to paint it yellow. Most yellows are quite transparent, so painting them over white is quite easy and painting them over most other colors is quite difficult. I used demonic yellow from Army Painter and then gave it a wash of Ianton yellow contrast paint. The effect was too harsh, so I pulled off most of the contrast paint with a wet brush, leaving a little in the crevices. Besides the Christmas tree, I felt the diorama needed some more trees and I wanted to add some on the top of the hills. For the trees I used dried sea foam, which looks fairly realistic as model trees. They're not very sturdy, so they're not good for wargaming, but for this diorama they're great. 
I almost didn't have to do anything to them, I just cleaned them up and gave them a dark brown spray paint. Like with the miniatures I painted, I also added a pin to the trees so they'd be easier to attach to the diorama. I added the snow in the same way as the rest of the diorama and the Christmas tree by spraying them with a matte varnish and straining snow flock over them. The final step was to assemble the diorama and stick in the miniatures and trees to the base. I used my hand drill to punch holes in the plaster where I wanted the miniatures and trees to stand. Then I added a bead of PVA glue to the pin and slotted in the hole I just made. I stopped myself from using super glue and used PVA glue instead because super glue would melt the foam base. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun doing this project and I learned a lot of new techniques. If you have any thoughts to help me improve or ideas for future projects, I'd love to hear them. I plan on doing a few simple tutorials for the next couple of videos before I tackle another big project. Sacrifice a like to the algorithm and I'll see you in the next one.